years now, England have had heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak at big international tournaments. And a lot of the blame has been put on Southgate. But the one thing that has changed for this upcoming Euros is the squad selection is different to every other one in the fact that players aren't picked on how much Southgate likes them necessarily, but on their form. Players like Gordon have got in over Rashford. Players like Eze have got in over Mount. It is really exciting to see players like Mainu, Wharton, they've all got a chance in this squad. And for that reason, this Euros might just be the one to bring it home. And that is where I get involved because I'm going to be showing you guys my favourite England starting eleven with the squad available. But the only catch is I'm going to be assuming everyone is fully fit. Like Shaw and players like him who aren't 100% for the first couple of games. I'm going to be including them in my squad or not. You have to wait and see. But... Everyone is available out of the 26-man squad. But before we get into that video, if you guys are new here, make sure to hit subscribe, hit like, turn on notifications, and follow my TikTok and my Twitter, or X as it's now called. Both of them are LLF for 63, and the link is in the description down below because I'm currently asking you guys for your football hot takes, and the video will be out in a couple days' time. So if you do want to appear in that video, make sure to go to the TikTok, go to the Twitter, get your hot takes in, and you will appear in one of my videos next week it's as simple as that but let's get back to this video so as you can see here we've got the squad the formation i've gone with is a 4-2-3-1 but it's kind of very versatile as you'll see with the players that are getting involved and i'll show you how i think it will actually line up in possession out of possession all of that but i'm going to go player by player and give reasons and potentially some stats if i see they're necessary but for the first person, I think it's really obvious and everyone is having the same player in goal. I would hope anyway, it has to be Jordan Pickford. Had an unbelievable season with Everton. Picked up 13 clean sheets with a team that was almost in a relegation battle. Literally the entire season. Obviously because of point deductions, but either way, they almost got relegated until about the last five games or so. And he was a massive reason that they were comfy towards the end he's an unbelievable keeper makes massive saves and that's what i'm talking about his england career in the past where he has been a crucial player in the last few tournaments for us and i think we're getting the exact same pick for this tournament if not maybe even a little bit better and due to a lot of youth being in this team as well he is going to be more than just a keeper for us he's going to be a leader like he always is but now it might be more needed than ever because we've got a lot of youngsters i know people like bellingham are great leaders but experience can't be beaten and Pickford has abundances of that. So Pickford has got to be the number one for me. Now moving to the right back and this again is pretty obvious. It's got to be Carl Walker. And if you want stats, I've got them too. 4.8 ball recoveries a game. And that is exactly what I want him doing in this England squad. I want him as a complete sweeper. In possession, he might even go to a back three. I'll show you the tactics a bit more when we get everyone involved. But I'm thinking whoever the left back's going to be, Pushes up a bit more, centre-backs push across and Carl Walker joins a bit of a back three in possession and he is going to be covering anything behind the other two centre-backs just like that and I think that is the perfect player in the entire world. There's no one better at that than Carl Walker. He could literally single-handedly save us a good few goals this tournament purely because of his pace, positioning, recovery, all of that. So, Carl Walker, without a doubt, has to be our starting right back. And that is a very solid first two picks. Let me know if you do have anyone different, but I'm pretty sure so far that is basically what everyone's going to be having. But you know what that is? It's centre-back time. So, the right centre-back is the obvious pick here. Let's get that out of the way. And it's John Stones. There's so many reasons that it has to be John Stones, but one of them is the fact that he has a 94 pass accuracy over a whole season. It's absolutely crazy for a sense back obviously he did fall out of favor a bit with man city but there's no question he's our best sense back in the entire squad so he has to be starting and there is something interesting as well because obviously i haven't told you his partner yet but we do know it's not going to be harry Maguire because he hasn't been picked up to the squad because of an injury he has in his calf so my thinking is john stones can take up that Maguire role a bit more and give this uh, other centre mid a bit more freedom. Maybe to drift out wide. That might be a hint to who it is. And John Stones can drift in a bit more. We have Walker to cover inwards if not. But it gives John Stones that more Maguire role for England. Where in the past we've seen Maguire in this spot. Carry the ball forward. Sometimes all the way up to the attacking midfield winger position. And play some good balls. But this time it's going to be John Stones in that exact movement. But this time we're going to create some space in the midfield for him. And I mean, John Stones is better than that, at uh, better at that than Maguire, sorry. So for me, John Stones is the obvious 
pick and for his partner, which is potentially the most controversial pick in the team, has got to be Joe Gomez for me. He's just been unbelievable for Liverpool and he's so versatile, which can't be overlooked in a team like this, especially with the left back position being really weak in injury form at the minute. I think Gomez could be crucial for us. I am having him to start in left centre back, but if needed, I am happy to him uh, happy for him, sorry, to play left back, right back. He can literally play anywhere along the back four and do it to a very, very high level. But because Stones is going up a bit more, Gomez is going to be a bit more of a sweeper too. But he will form that central centre back role if we need to go to a back three at any points. He is a very, very solid centre back and actually led his mistakes led to zero goals this season. So we didn't make a mistake which led to a single goal over an entire season, which is absolutely crazy. Because in the past, he's been known for being a little bit clumsy. But this was by far his best ever season in a Liverpool shirt. And for that reason, I think he's got to be starting for England too. He is a really, really solid centre-back. And it can even do the left-back role if we need him to as well. So we've got Gomez, Stones, Walker, Pickford... Those are the first three defenders. There's only one more spot to do. But do remember, for this left-back spot, it is going to be short. But remember what I said earlier, we are basing it off the fact that he's going to be fit, which I don't think he will be for the first game or two. But I think when he is fit, he will come back into the team straight away. Even though he has only played 12 games this season, I think he's one of those players which is too good to ignore. Also, we don't have great backup here. So we kind of are forced to play Shaw when he is fit. Honestly, I think Gomez might fill in there while Shaw is injured because Trippier's had a rough season. It's most likely going to be Trippier, but I would like Shaw to fill in. But it is going to probably be Trippier. But he hasn't had a great season. He had a great start to the season. Really struggled in the second half. Shaw has barely played this season, but what he's done for England can't be looked beyond. He offers something a bit different to everyone else. He's, he's a great worker. He works so hard. He has up and down so well. He wins so many challenges. But on the ball, he is also an amazing crosser which could be really important for the likes of Kane, Bellingham. So I think if Shaw is fit, he has to be starting. It's as simple as that. I don't think we can not play Shaw if he's fit, if he's in the squad. There's a reason he's still in the squad, even though he's only played 12 games this season. So I think Shaw has to be the starting left back when he's back fully fit. And that is the back five done. We've got Pickford in goal, Walker right back, Stone centre back with Gomez and Shaw at left back. That's a solid back five if you ask me. What would you change though? to that back five. Do let me know down below. It's now time to move on to the midfield. Now, moving on to the first midfielder again. It's pretty obvious, nothing controversial here. It is Declan Rice. And I don't think this is a guarantee. I think this is a star player for us. He's not just a guaranteed player. He is potentially the first name on the team sheet after Harry Kane. He is going to be absolutely essential for us. And when you look at the season he's just had at Arsenal, he's almost had a he's almost found a whole nother level since leaving West Ham. He ended up with seven goals eight assists and that's just talking about his attacking play but let's stay on that for a minute so he only scored seven goals off 3.5 xg that's absolutely crazy he doubled his goals from xg and picking up eight assists along the way so it shows he can score goals which he shouldn't really be scoring and that is perfect for international football if he hovers around the edge of the box at all he's going to be getting a lot of chances and I could really see him getting two goals, three assists or something like that this tournament. And considering he's going to be our most defensive midfielder, that's the kind of player that could end up winning you a whole tournament. I know it might sound a bit crazy saying Rice could be the reason we win the entire Euros, but I think with that goal involvement mixed with his defensive ability that we'll get onto in a minute, I think it's undoubtedly going to be our best performer in the midfield. I know that's crazy with some of the players that are still yet to join it, but I think Rice is a difference maker and every country would bite the hand off them if someone offered them Declan Rice. But moving on to his defensive stats, he got 2.2 tackles a game, 4.7 ball recovered a game, 1.2 interceptions. There's so many stats you can read out for someone like Declan Rice. But that just shows he can go forward for you. He can get big goals, big assists. All of that, his passing ability is unbelievable. But at the same time, he is a really, really solid defensive midfielder. And he is going to pair so nicely next to the guy that I have right next to him. So let's move on to him. So for the other centre mid, I've actually decided to go with Trent. I think the other option is Maynou, and I think both could work very well, but in different circumstances. So I've gone for Trent for games where they're a bit closer. I think games where big chances count, I think Trent's the best player for that second centre mid role, because he can create a chance out of absolutely nothing. 
but I would probably have Mainu in a game where maybe we're looking to dominate the ball a bit more because him and Rice and Bellingham as a midfield three, they're not losing the ball whatsoever. Three of the best ball retention players in the entire world. But for games where we need a bit more creativity, I think Trent could be that perfect centre mid role, especially if the other team don't have too much going forward. So I think Trent in the group stages has got to be a surety against Denmark, against Serbia, where they're not offering too much going forward. Give Trent that ball and let him do diags to left wing, in behind, right wing, everything. He can do it all on the ball. And in games like that, he's probably not going to get pressed too heavily. And if he does, he's got the on-ball ability to do short passes in triangles like that. He's by far good enough to play in that centre mid role, especially against teams where we're going to have a lot of the ball. And he can ping it however many times he likes. But I think Mainu, where the other team's midfield is a bit stronger, he could be of use. Because against, for example, against France, when you're getting pressed by Chouameni, Kamavinga, I feel like there you might see Trent show his inexperience in midfield. I know Manu also has that, but Manu plays like a 30-year-old 30, 30 centre-mid that's been doing it for ages. So, as much as Trent is a better footballer than Manu, I think Manu may be better suited to certain games. But I think for most games, it has to be Trent. And for me, the 10 again is obvious. I've mentioned his name so much already. It's got to be... Jude Bellingham and again you don't need stats for him I think it was 19 goals six assists in the end in La Liga just won the Champions League without a doubt going to be a key key player for us and also his new role at Real Madrid that he's adapted due to the lack of their striker and fairness could be crucial here as we almost see number nine who could that be we don't know uh, move to one side him almost go as a second striker and just like that we're looking at a little four triple two with the two up front being Bellingham and obviously Kane. Let's just get that out of the way now. Let me write that in now and then we'll talk about them at the end. Bellingham and Kane. Then we have Rice and Trent. And this is where Trent will really, really thrive here. He gets on the ball and he's going to have so much space because they're going to be occupying Bellingham and Kane so carefully. Trent's going to be able to drift all around this area right here, playing the balls all the way into this space for the left winger or Bellingham to get onto or even Kane go over here. And Bellingham getting there. These kind of balls in the box here could be the difference maker in big, big group stage games. Also early quarters, round of 16. Those kind of games where you're playing maybe the weaker teams. These kind of balls will absolutely kill them. They would have not faced much players that can do the deliveries that Trent can. So if he picks up these spaces out here, it could be game over with us flooding the back post. This area here, two players making that run into the box. Trent picking up his nice little right mid spot there and playing them in behind and it will absolutely finish basically any team in our group stage and that's why I think Arnold has got to be in the team and that's also why Bellingham has got to be. He offers something different to all the other 10s in our team. He can go to a second striker and with Trent and Shaw on the pitch with their crossing ability, Kane and Bellingham will feed goals for days. They'll have so many chances fall to them and them two players both know how to take a chance in the box. And the next player is, again, really obvious. It's Phil Foden, but we won't put all his name in capital letters. There we go. Phil Foden. Again, he's too good to ignore. Just one PFA player of the year. He's won, what, six Premier League trophies. Again, he's going to be an absolute star man for us. I think him and Rice are going to be the two main men, other than Kane. But that's a bit different. Kane is just that guy. But Foden and Rice are going to be something special. And I, like I said here with Bellingham, Push up to a second striker. It also allows Foden the ability to drift in and out into his more natural 10 role. But obviously, we've seen him do the left wing more than enough to start there. But he can fade in and out of the left and the mid and the attacking midfield. Gives Shaw a bit more space on this left-hand side there. And then everyone can shift across in the back there. And Trent can drift a bit wider. And you end up with a weird looking formation. But I think it just works because we have every single player to make it work. They're all in their natural roles with doing this. And I think this could be absolutely disgusting against the weaker teams. They just won't know what's hit them. If we start moving around players like that in formation, Foden at one point he's left wing, one point he's right wing, stuff like that. I don't think any team is capable really of actually stopping that in this tournament. So that is why Foden, obviously without a doubt, has to be starting left wing. But he will drift in a lot of the time if we set up like this. And the last of the middle three is obviously Saka. And he is just way too consistent to be dropping. Obviously the alternative would be Palmer. But I think Saka offers something a little bit different 
as Palmer is a bit more of a Foden-esque player. Obviously, he's a bit taller and a bit more, likes to look for long passes and uses body a bit more. But in terms of they're not the quickest, well, they are quick, but they don't use their pace all the time. They like to receive the ball short, cut in, do stuff like that, whereas Saka is a bit more of a direct traditional winger. And I think that balance is a lot better with Foden and Bellingham inside. With Palmer, they all kind of want to drift into the 10. So it might become a bit crowded at points and not let each of them actually show what they can do. So I think we start Saka and then uh, Palmer is something that we bring on in basically every game. But I want Saka literally just to be up and down this wing. And like I said, let's say Shaw goes up here. Gomez will then come across a bit. Stones and then Walker. And obviously, remember Gomez has played a lot of this season at left back. So this left centre back role is not something too unique to him. We then have Saka that is able to do a little bit of defending over here in this role as well. So he can fill in if Shaw does go up a bit too far. And Saka is the perfect player for that right wing. He's got such a good work rate and he will always give you a solid 7 or 8 out of 10 most games he's a great player a consistent player and he will facilitate for the other players so much that's why he's got to be starting on that right wing and obviously the last player is already in there it's harry kane and this one was obviously the first name on the team sheet you can't not include harry kane he's just had an unbelievable season in germany obviously didn't end up winning anything but this he was saving it all for this summer is what i heard anyway but he is way too good to drop he's going to be our best player most likely once again, his impact on the game, not necessarily just goal scoring, it is absolutely insane. Without Trent in this team, let's say this was, instead of Trent, let's say this was Menu. He then suddenly becomes our best passer on the entire pitch and he's up front. But obviously, you know what that means? Bellingham can sit up here for a bit. Kane can drop a bit deeper and a bit more naturally because Kane loves to drop deep. But usually in England, there's not been a 10 that sits up front to replace him. But this time we could see it line up like this at some point throughout the game. And with Mainu being here, Mainu's not looking to go too far forward. So Mainu and Rice will sit and it allows Bellingham and Kane just to swap each and every play. They can just swap slightly and just make it a bit of a nuisance for defenders. We can see them both up there. We can see them both a bit deeper and Saka make inverted runs. There's so many options when Kane is that striker position. And that's why I really, really like him and Bellingham as the 10 and the 9. So I think they're going to swap so much and it's going to cause so much confusion for every single team we play against. But that is the full start at 11 for me. I'll put Trent back in here. So if, you, if you've skipped to the end, Trent is in there. But Manu, I think, will get quite a few minutes as well. And saying that as well, quick shout out to Anthony Gordon because I think we're going to see him on this left wing a lot as well. Especially if Trent's floating out here, looking for the diagonal balls over here. We're going to see Gordon up and down, making inverted runs. And that will work so nicely, I think. So shout out to Gordon as well because I think him and Manu will be very important even though they're not in the start 11. Same with Trippier in at left back. But that is where we're going to leave it for this video. What would you change to this team? This is my team that I want to see start the Euros. Write yours down below. Also remember, go follow the X, the TikTok, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. But until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.